Welcome to Motivated to Lead Podcast, helping you become a better leader. I'm your host, Mark Klingsein. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us again this week for our podcast. Each week, we interview leaders, and this week, we're happy to have with us Ralph Ballastrere. Ralph is the Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer for Red Wing Shoes, a 115-year-old company that has global operations. Uh, earlier in his career, he worked in the medical technology field, uh, worked for companies such as St. Jude and Teleflex, and has held senior leadership positions in those companies. Uh, he has some great lessons he's going to share with us that he's learned in his career. Looking forward to our conversation with Ralph. First off, Ralph, can you give us just a little bit of your, your story, your history, and a little bit of your career? Sure, sure, Mark. Uh, I, I was, uh, you know, grew up in the uh, North Shore of Massachusetts, uh, second generation Italian, Italian immigrants that came over in the, in the 30s to the United States. I studied at Boston University. And then I had some jobs after Boston University. Then I really, my career really started to, to blossom when I joined a company called CR Bard, a medical device company uh, based out of New Jersey. I was with them for 18 years in a progressive financial roles, and a lot of focus was on international finance. Part of that time I was with Bard, so I spent six years in the UK as head of their European finance and administration group. So it was a great experience for me. And uh, I learned a lot and really, uh, you know, was a great part of my, uh, memorable part of my career. Uh, moved on to become a CFO for a, a med equipment company out of Cleveland called Marconi Medical Systems. Was there a short period of time because we sold the business. We sold mm-hmm. the, the company uh, shortly after I joined to uh, Royal Phillips out of the Netherlands. And then that led me to Minnesota where I joined St. Jude Medical as their CFO for their cardiology group. Uh, in 2003. Spent four years there, whereas then I received an opportunity to join another medical device company called Teleflex, based out of North Carolina. And I was with them about four years, but I was still living in Minnesota, commuting, Mm -hmm. and I was getting old. It was a great company, great company to be with, but then one day a recruiter called me and offered to talk to me about the Red Wing job. I had been in the medical device industry for 28 years, Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, a footwear company calls me up and says, you know, they're looking for a CFO and trying to figure out that I can can, uh, qualify for that position. But finance is finance, and uh, it's easier to fit into different uh, organizations when you have one functional uh, expertise. And I came to to interview with Red Wing. Uh, It's an iconic brand, a 115-year-old company today. is um, truly an American brand. Uh, we have manufacturing sites and uh, two manufacturing sites, one here in Red Wing, one in Missouri. We also own our own tannery. So we're vertically integrated with our leather. Uh, we have significant uh, brands and the Red Wing brand is very strong in both the work and our heritage line, which is our fashion line, both men's and women's. And then we've uh, expanded that into the Irish Setter line, which is a, also a work line, a little pro, lower price point, sold in more big box stores. And, uh, and we, we also have the Hunt brand. And our third brand is the Vast brand, which is our outdoor brand. It's hiking, hiking and trail running. And that those you'll find those type of uh, shoes in either a Bass Pro Shop or an REI uh, type of store. We have 750 retail stores under the Red Wing name throughout the world. Um, 21 of those are dedicated heritage stores, not work brand stores, but most of those are works, brand stones. And also we have a series of industrial trucks that travel to industrial sites and become mobile shoe stores. And these are, we're very unique in that area of the business. And, and our industrial business is one of our fastest growing uh, business. Uh, businesses. Not only footwear, though, we also support the energy industry and PPE. Uh, we, we customize PPE garments. Uh, we sell gloves, helmets, goggles, mm-hmm. as well as our footwear, and we support the oil industry throughout the world. We have hubs in Dubai, um, uh, Amsterdam, uh, Aberdeen, Scotland, Norway, as well as Houston here in the States, in, in actual oil hubs. And um, 
that, that has been a successfully grow, a growing business for us. And we're now going to be expanding that into the total energy market, wind and, and solar. So we see tremendous growth coming from, the, from that business. We're privately held uh, as a family of uh, Swayze's who are majority shareholders of the company. Uh, we're third generation Swayze is our chairman of the board, Bill. And we're also grooming a fourth generation Swayze within the company today. Mm. Um, it's, um, it's really been refreshing joining Red Wing from coming from a public company environment. We think long term. We don't think quarter to quarter. We have to worry about Wall Street analysts calling us up all the time or me up all the time and have to answer <laughs> right. those questions. So it's been rewarding that way. And we've been very successful. We've had average growth as a company over the last 10 years, about 10, 8 to 10 percent. So, um, you know, it's, a, it's been a great brand, great ride for me. And I really have enjoyed my time here. Actually, I consider myself blessed to have joined the Red Wing Shoe Company, mm. a company like this. So. Um, please look us up as far as our shoes and footwear. They're, they're fantastic uh, products. So that's yeah. a little bit about my life and career. I didn't realize how, how big the global reach uh, you yeah. have and, and uh, definitely have become a uh, kind of a, for the next generation, have become aware of the, uh, uh, the shoes that you, you make. So become a fashion thing. Uh, that's that right. It's an yeah. interesting story there, Mark, about that. Uh, it was, it was always a work line. The Heritage line actually started in Japan. There was a famous movie star. Um, he wore the 875, which is our iconic footwear brand, which is um, highlighted in most of our, uh, our uh, ads, and, et cetera. Anyway, people so uh, enthralled with this movie star, and, then, and, and, and the, the boot became famous in Japan. Mm. And that started our heritage business. And then we expanded that globally. And now we have over 300 styles of fashion brands as both men and women sold in, in, in both dedicated men's and dedicated women's stores throughout Europe and, and Asia. So it's Very a cool, cool, cool uh, part of our business that we really feel is going to really grow and become a, a large piece of our, our total business someday. Great. Well, I ask this question of every guest that comes on. If, if you were knowing what, what you know now, if you were yeah. able to go back and talk to a 22-year-old Ralph, uh, yeah. what advice would you give him? Okay. I would say don't get so anxious, anxious with your project, the progress of your career. Your ambitions will be filled by exceptional work ethic, uh, working smart, learning ways to become a strong, influential leader. Uh, take advantage of the opportunities as they present themselves, but don't rush, rush things. Don't make decisions and join. Do something that is not part. Would you fail? Don't 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 put yourself in a situation where you're going to fail. And I think that would be a a lot of a lot of the younger people today really are very anxious and they really want to be you know they want to be millionaires by the time they're 23, <laughs> and which a lot of them are. Uh, God bless them. But, uh, you know, it's, you have to work hard to get there. Got it. Any advice that looking back that you received that uh, now in hindsight you, you would yeah. have uh, would yeah. ignore? I made that earlier is that uh, don't take on roles that you aren't, cap aren't capable of fulfilling mm -hmm. the, the expectations of those roles. Don't set yourself up for, fa for failure. Do always uh, avoid in your, in your, as you're young, and being influenced by people in the, in the organization, especially mentors, make sure that you're not taking shortcuts in the, the way you do things, especially in the finance area. There's a lot of gray areas you can delve into. Mm -hmm. Do things the right way. You know, always do the right thing, as I tell my organization and tell myself all the time. Now, you have a, a company that uh, has been around for 115 years. Uh, how have you seen as far as the culture? How do, how do they keep that culture uh, healthy? And uh, what are some, some ideas that you've seen as far as within your organization? Well, I, I, you know, it's type of pe we we're trying to bring in people who are going to, cons it's people first. And it's a culture and people is a very part, important part of our organization. And we try to bring in the right type of person that can fit our culture very well. And we, we, we treat them fairly, we respect them, uh, 
we uh, work life balance is very important to us. Uh, family is very important. Mm. And we want to bring you into our family and you to be part of that family as a team. Um, none of us are smarter than anybody else. Uh, we're all work very collaboratively. Everybody's opinion is important and we take everybody's opinion into consideration. And we want to make sure that everybody feels important as they part of this as part of this culture, and that's been through the century, through the decades, the same similar culture that's throughout the. Um, and that's what brought me to Red Wing. The minute I walked in the door, I saw this is really different. This is a place for me, and uh, that's that's why I joined. It's because of the culture here. Yeah. So you, you've built a lot of uh, teams over the years, and yeah. I'm sure you've, uh, you've managed a lot of people. As, as a manager of people, what are some, maybe somebody that's new to leadership, what advice would you give them? Well, I, I would say, uh, you know, as you, if you're going to be a leader and you're going to bring in or create an organization, bring in the most talented, hardworking people you can find, uh, intelligent people. Try to surround yourself with people smarter than you. Don't profess to know the answers. Listen, understand before you you have to be understood, uh, and 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 try to build a collaborative work culture, a t- real team team organization that you're all working together, and and that's uh, I try to be one of the people in the room, even though my opinion counts, and when I express my opinion, people have to listen, and sometimes they take me more seriously than take others, obviously, because of my role on my business card. But we try, we try to be a team that, you know, all, all are as, just as important as everybody's opinion is important. So um, that, that's why my advice would be, is both bringing the smartest people you can find, hardworking, but also people who want to be part of a team versus people who, who really care about their own ambitions and, and, them, and, and selfish needs. Uh, avoid those type of people into your organization and you'll be successful. You'll be a successful leader. Great. What books have impacted uh, your <laughs> life and what would, you, what would you recommend for somebody to pick up if they're yeah, this new is a leadership? Hard. A hard one when I when you asked me that question before. Um, I, I saw the three books that three business books that were influential to me. One was Good to Great. Uh, that was a you know talks about level five leaders, people are you know a lot, lot what I consider myself humble but driven professionally, lack ego, uh, have a winning attitude, have a vision. I mean that's what that book told. And and if you're not and what it said was if you can't get on the bus with us get off the bus. So you can't be part of those. And those, those were, those level five leaders are with very sustainable, ex, ex, successful organizations versus ones that weren't, didn't have those characteristics were failures. So that was what I t- took out of that book. The other one was a, definitely an old, some of the older book because of my age is seven habits of highly effective people by mm-hmm. Stephen Convey. You know, he talked that talks about people who are proactive, having a, a vision, I uh, put first things first, have put priority, think winning all the time. So those are some of the aspects of that book that I, I've taken and, and used in my own self career. And then going back to the seventies, as I was a young person, I read the one minute manager and it became, you know, it helped me in my, the way I organized my thoughts, organized my, my priorities, what I did day to day versus, you know, try not to waste time. Uh, that that helped me uh, along the way. So those are the three books that, uh, business books that influenced me, uh, my career, and uh, felt I feel it's helped my success. Right. Any uh, quotes? Yeah, that question. that's a good question. I I think of three three quotes that have always sit with me very well, and one is from nobody, uh, a former CFO, a CEO of a company I worked with. Uh, first of all, JFK, you know, we choose to go to the moon, not because it's easy, but because it was hard. So always try to do things that challenge yourselves. Uh, that's really what that says. And try to think, try to come to a, create a, a vision that's uh, what we may think is unattainable, but you can go for it. And that's what a former CEO, CEO always said was, uh, you know, no problem is impossible to, to solve. Nothing is impossible. 
always feel you can solve any of these problems. And then the other thing I always, I always profess is don't bring me problems without solutions. Wow. You know, I, you know, wow. always, yeah, I hate people just come to my office and just sit there and just tell me all the world's problems, you know, come up with some answers. Sure. Uh, along with the problems and that help me out. Don't think of, I'm going to have all the, all the answers. And then one, I'm from Massachusetts. So I'm a football fan and I'm a New England Patriots season ticket holder as a matter of fact, I'm a Patriot fan. And it's become famous, uh, Bill Belichick, three simple words. He says, do your job. Hmm. And I, I've, I've talked to my organization about that. And what he means by that is, you know, it's very simple, but what he means by that is you know, he tells his players, you know, everything you've been taught since you were behind your junior high on those grassy fields, um, come, come and do, just do your job well. And if all 11 players and all 22 players did their job well, greatness will happen. And that's how you win Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, if my organization, my finance organization, you know, I have about, you know, 100 people in my finance organization. If every one of us did that job well, think how powerful an organization would be, how good we'd be. And think of our company. If we were uh, 3,000 people in the Red Wing Shoe Company, if every one of them just did their job well, did their job, think how powerful, great company we could be. So th- those some three words uh, are very unique and uh you know, I've tried to use them in, in the way I run my business. Great. That's great. Great advice. As, as you're thinking about uh, the boards that you've yeah. served on, as well yeah. as being an a active uh, part of, of those conversations, uh, what advice would you give to somebody that maybe has not worked with a board and, and things that you've learned in your career? Well, as you're working with a board, uh, Create a, an image of high integrity. Build strong relationships with them. Be as transparent as possible. Don't pretend to have answers when you don't have them. Come back with the right answers. Uh, all these board members were, you know, in your role, in your spot one time in their careers. You know, they all came up to the ranks and they all made mistakes and they all always didn't have the answers. Be, be honest with yourself and be with them. Um, you know, uh, other things is that, you know, when you, when you do present to the board, don't get buried in the detail. Boards like to deal with very high level. So, you know, they can read PowerPoints. You don't have to read the PowerPoint for them. So just stay at a high level with them, have the right answers, have takeaways from your presentation that they can that sit and resonate with them. So those are some of the things, but most important is act with integrity, be honest, be, in tra- be transparent, and the boards will really uh, latch on to, to you very well. Ed, that's great. Uh, so outside of, of work, Ralph, what do you do to, I, I understand you're a football fan, so sure, that's that. probably part of it. You got it, got that. I, you know, my wife and I live in Minneapolis, so we like to take long walks around the city, visit the restaurants, and and we enjoy that. I, I run on a treadmill uh, several times a week. I, I like to golf. I have two grandchildren that I like to part, you know, work with, uh, go to their sports activities. And then um, we love warm weather. Warm, sunny beach is a nice place to be sometimes. So those are, I'm very simple. I don't have a lot of great hobbies, but, you know, I do like the golf a lot. Right. You know, I stink at it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, yeah, it's the game that everybody loves to hate. And, and depending on the day, you either love it or hate it. But, uh, yeah. Well, uh, any, any parting advice that you could, you could give somebody? And we, we have a lot of people that tune in that, you know, again, yeah. are, are new leaders. But uh, what would you say to them? Yeah, I mean, be honest with yourself understand what your capabilities are, be humble, surround yourself, as I mentioned earlier, surround yourself with the right people, uh, be, take advantage of your strengths and minimize your weaknesses, hard, work hard and, and be, be honest and, and uh, look, at the, look for the right opportunities as they present themselves. I, 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 one of the great opportunities we had as a young, uh, when we were just after we got married and we had two kids, was the opportunity to move to Europe. Uh, we had a two-year-old and a two-month-old. And, uh, you know, people would be crazy to do something like that. 
but we, we moved to, to London and uh, it was just the best. We were there several, many years and several years and it was the best, time, most memorable times of our lives. And it was a great opportunity for me. It really helped my career. So take advantage of if those opportunities present themselves. Take advantage of those. Yeah. Those are great. great. Yeah. Well, thanks, Ralph. This has been a lot of fun and definitely Good. enjoyed our conversation and wish you uh, continued success at uh, Red Wing Shoes as, as uh, you, you help them and, and uh, lead the, the finance uh, for that organization. My pleasure and uh, thank you very much. Good luck to everyone. Thank you for listening to the Motivated to Lead podcast. Please subscribe on iTunes. You can also see a video version of this interview at motivatedtolead.com. This podcast is brought to you by SEMA Partners, helping you find your next great leader.